So a lot of people actually overcomplicate investing. They'll spend a whole bunch of time researching different stocks and creating these spreadsheet models that try to predict whether the price of a stock will go up or down. And they'll constantly try to optimize their portfolio such that they can maximize the return that they can get. But what ends up happening is they actually overcomplicate it to the point where they actually don't beat the market the majority of the time. There was a new report that found that almost 80% of active fund managers are falling behind the major indexes in terms of performance. But what if I told you that there were only three investments that you needed to make and that these investments when held together will actually not underperform against the market and is actually so simple to do that anyone can do it. Now, in case anyone's new here, hi, my name is Raymond and my goal on this channel is to make personal finance easy and accessible in order to help you achieve financial independence. Now, the financial media has done a great job in portraying the idea that investing is something complicated and difficult. It's created the illusion that if we were to do more work and more research, then we could find that magic formula out there that would give us the perfect investment portfolio that would give us above market returns. But the brutal truth is that the more complex an investment is, the less likely it is to be profitable. And I don't mean to pop your bubble, but there's no such thing as a perfect investment portfolio, only one that works for you and one that you can follow. And that's why in today's video, I wanna introduce you to the world's simplest investment portfolio. I'll talk through my rationale as to why I picked these assets, some of the benefits to this investment approach, and also some portfolio allocations that you can consider as well. I'll also touch on some alternatives to the portfolio that you might wanna consider as well. Now, the world's simplest investment portfolio is simply made up of two broad index tracking ETFs and your own high interest savings accounts. Now let's dig into exactly what makes up this portfolio. Now the first is an index tracking ETF focused on the Australian share market. My favorite here is Vanguard's Australian Shares Index, otherwise known as VAS. This will provide you with exposure to the Australian stock market and will be one of the main engines to provide you with growth over the long term. The second component is another index tracking ETF, but this time focused on the international markets. And my favorite here is Vanguard's International Shares ETF, otherwise known as VGS. This will essentially provide you with exposure to all other major developed markets around the world, excluding Australia. And finally, the third asset is cash. Now, in my opinion, cash is probably one of the most underrated assets out there. And this is probably because people judge it based on its asset class. Whilst cash doesn't really make you a lot of money, kind of simply sits there paying the bills. It could technically even lose you money due to inflation but cash provides you with so many other benefits that are often overlooked. It has the ability to be a safety net during times of emergency, enable you to take advantage of opportunities, and my favorite is that it simply provides you with peace of mind. Now you could turn off the video here right now, but if you wanna learn more about why I chose these assets, then let's continue on to part two. So my reasoning for choosing VAS and VGS was I essentially asked myself the question, what's the best way to gain exposure to shares from around the world that's low maintenance and also has low fees as well. At the end of the day, we don't know which companies are going to be the top companies in Australia, let alone around the world. So by investing into a broad index tracking ETF like VAS and VGS, we'll never actually have to worry about that because we'll automatically be investing into the largest companies from around the world. So let's deep dive a little bit into these ETFs so we understand them a little bit more. So VAS has a market cap of $12.5 billion, making it actually the largest ETF on the Australian Stock Exchange today. Now, this is actually pretty beneficial because it means that the fund is extremely liquid, meaning that there's plenty of people buying and selling the shares on a daily basis. So later on in life, when we actually choose to sell our shares, you won't face any issues. VAS also has a management fee of just 0.1% per annum, meaning that if you had invested $10,000, you'd really only be paying $10 in fees each year. Now, VAS isn't the cheapest ETF on the market that provides you with exposure to the Australian stock market. 
but there's actually no other ETF on the market that provides you with more diversification than BAS does. BAS provides you with exposure to the top 300 companies on the Australian stock market. Most of the other ETFs on the market at most only provide you with exposure to the top 200 companies on the Australian stock market. So by investing into BAS, you get exposure to pretty much 100 additional companies, making it much more diversified. Now, if you hadn't have noticed, BAS is purely focused on the Australian stock market. So if we had only invested into BAS, there'd probably be some diversification issues. Australia, believe it or not, only really makes up 3% of the total world's stock market. So that's why we need another ETF like BGS that provides us with exposure to other international markets. So a little bit about BGS, it currently has a market cap of $5.3 billion, making it the third largest ETF on the Australian stock market. It has a slightly higher management fee at 0.18% per annum, and it provides you with exposure to over 1,500 different companies from around the world. Now, the key thing about BGS is that it's excluding Australia, meaning it doesn't actually invest into any Australian companies, which is why it makes the perfect complement to BAS. Together, these two ETFs essentially provide you with exposure to all developed markets from around the world. Now, finally, let's talk about cash. Now, I'm of the opinion that you should probably hold more cash than you're comfortable with. The main reason behind this is I believe that cash provides you with additional benefits outside of just being able to pay for all of your bills. If you had enough cash lying in your bank account, able to fund your life for a year, you'd be surprised at how little stress you'd have. When you don't have enough cash, this this means that you don't have enough cushion in your life. And when you don't have enough cushion, this could lead you to making irrational decisions. When we're in a vulnerable financial position, it leads to us making irrational decisions such as selling off our assets during a market downturn, which will ultimately only lead you to a worse off financial position. When you have enough cash in your bank account to weather off a year of unemployment, or a market downturn, you have the time to carefully plot your next move and time to make the best financial decision possible. I consider cash to be the third leg of this portfolio. And whilst it might not seem attractive, it's actually pivotal to this portfolio working. It provides us with balance and support and without it, our portfolio could come crumbling down. Now next, what's the benefits of this investment portfolio? Now we've actually touched on quite a few of these benefits, but let's quickly summarize. The first benefit is that it's simple. Because you're really only investing into two different ETFs that provides you with diversified exposure to over 1,800 different companies, it's super simple to follow. Investing can be complicated if you make it so, but by following this portfolio, it'll make it really easy. And I've always found that the easier something is, the more likely you're gonna follow through with it. The second benefit of this investment portfolio is that you're well diversified. Warren Buffett once quoted that diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes little sense for those who know what they're doing. What we can basically take away from this is that for the average investor like you and I, we should really be diversifying our investments instead of going down the route of stock picking and trying to select companies that are going to outperform the market. The third benefit of this portfolio is that it has really low costs. The average expense ratio between BAS and VGS is only 0.14% meaning for every $10,000 you have invested, you'll only be paying $14 in fees. Fees are actually extremely important when it comes to investing. And I want you to take a look at this graph, which shows the effects of fees on your investment totals. The following chart shows an investment portfolio with an annual return of 4% per annum over 20 years. And it shows the comparison between a portfolio that has a 0.125% annual fee, 0.15% annual fee, and a 1% annual fee. We can see that based on how much we are paying in fees, this can drastically impact how much we're left with after 20 years. Over 20 years, a difference in fees of just 0.15% can reduce the final value by $10,000. And if there's a difference of 0.75%, then this would reduce your final investment value after 20 years by $30,000. So yeah, we like the fact that this portfolio has really low fees. All right, so the next question that you probably have 
is what's the portfolio allocation that you should follow? So how much should you have invested in the Australian stock market? How much should you have invested in the international market? And how much cash should you hold as well? Now, the answer to this question is really dependent on your own personal circumstances. So that's why I'll give some rough guidelines based on different life stages. So firstly, the wealth accumulation phase. This is essentially when you're in your 20s or 30s and you have a long career ahead of yourself. During this stage, the recommendation would be somewhere around 30% into BAS and 70% into VGS. And yes, this does mean that you're 100% invested into the stock market. Whilst this is considered an extremely aggressive investment approach, your 20s and 30s are the perfect time to be aggressive. You have decades to invest and the ups and downs of the market really should only be white noise to you. And you should actually be excited about market dips or market corrections because this creates great buying opportunities. The next phase is the transition phase. Now this is when you're in your 40s and your 50s and you're quite not at retirement yet, but you can definitely see it coming. During this phase, I definitely start to increase your cash allocation somewhere between five to 10%. You want to begin transitioning and rebalancing your portfolio such that you can prepare yourself for the wealth preservation phase. And finally, we have the wealth preservation phase. This is essentially when you're retired, you've built up your nest egg over the decades, and now you really want to maintain that wealth to fund your lifestyle moving forward. This is where you can ramp up your cash allocation to somewhere between 25 to 30%, you could probably also increase it to 40% if you want, just based on your own risk tolerance. If you wanted to, you could also add in bonds to your portfolio at this point in time. Cash and bonds, in my opinion, are relatively similar as they kind of do the same thing. And finally, I thought I might talk about some alternatives to VAS and VGS if you're looking to explore other ETFs. So a good alternative to VAS would be A200. A200 is from BetaShares and it provides you with exposure to the top top 200 companies in the Australian stock market, and it has a really low expense ratio of 0.07% compared to VAS's 0.1%. So if you want to absolutely optimize your portfolio and pay the least amount of fees possible, then you should definitely look into A200. Now, when it comes to finding a good alternative to VGS, Unfortunately, there isn't a perfect comparison simply because there's no other ETF on the market that provides the same level of exposure that VGS does. The closest is probably IBV provided by iShares, which provides you with exposure to the top 500 companies in the United States. However, choosing this alternative won't provide you with exposure to other developed markets from around the world, such as Europe and Asia. But the reason why I still think it's worth considering is that the United States actually makes up 72% of the total exposure from BGS. And then more importantly, the management fee of IVV only sits at 0.04% compared to VGS's 0.18%. So between A200 and IVV, the average expense ratio is something like 0.05%, which is extremely low, meaning you're gonna be paying like $5 for every $10,000 you have invested. All right, so that's all I had in this video. Now, if you enjoyed the video, learn something new, make sure to hit that like button down below because it really does help out the channel. Subscribe as well for more future content like this in the future. And as always guys, I will see you in the next video.